Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it truly is a privilege and an honour to be invited tonight to present the Lifetime Achievement Award for 2004 because the recipient is someone who is beloved of everyone in this room and countless, countless fans all across the world. In just a few moments, it really will be a happy gesture for me to present her with her Lifetime Award because the recipient this year is Maureen O'Hara. Just before that, just before that, here are just a few of the many, many people who wanted to be on record saying nice things about her. The word star nowadays perhaps is overused because so many people in life have an opportunity to perform on the big stage. But when describing Maureen O'Hara, there's no other word you can use uh, to uh, look at her career, to look at her fame or look at her reputation. Both her face and her name are known throughout the world. She was a star of the big screen, a star of the big movies and a star that would be remembered all over the world forever. As an Irish person, a wonderful Irish woman, what she's done for the country, always been a champion of, of things Irish, always been prepared to speak up for the Irish, has been much appreciated. In Ireland, she's still held with special pride uh, and wonderful memories. And of course, The Quiet Man, 1951, did more for Irish tourism than anything and made the great areas of Kong and the Mask and the Great Lakes and at the village of Kong, famous all over the world ever since. We thank her for all that she's achieved. She's a beautiful, a wonderful and talented person. Her movies, her big screen performances are as iconic today as they were when first made. Wish her well, wish her every success and thank her for all that she's done for this country. Hello Maureen and greetings from New York. Kitty and I are so sorry we can't be with you in Dublin to celebrate the Lifetime Achievement Award. I always think the O'Shea's, the O'Hara's and the Fitzsimons' are joined at the hip because we all went to convent school together. And then I took off to the boys' school with your brothers Charlie and Jimmy. And then we all came together in Miss Burke's elocution school. And then you took off for Hollywood and went from success to success. And wasn't I the lucky fella to be in one of those successes with you? Only the lonely. Maureen, you're not just a pretty face. You have a beautiful face. And you're a very talented lady and we're so proud of you. Gnairig and Boholath. Have a wonderful time tonight. Hello, Maureen. I remember working with you on The Parent Trap so well. You were so sweet to me always and immensely warm. I just thought you were the most vibrant, beautiful person I'd ever seen and I believed in you utterly. You brought to my mum and to that film all your glorious sense of fun and joie de vivre. And a few years ago when we met together at that extraordinary do in Hollywood, you were exactly the same. You hadn't changed at all. Congratulations on this wonderful award, Maureen. You richly deserve it. I just wish I could be there to give you a hug. I'm sure you're having a great night and radiating away in that room. Lots and lots of love, and God bless you. Congratulations, Maureen O'Hara. I remain a big fan of yours. Um, I can prove this because you're an E.T. in that scene from The Quiet Man where John Wayne and you kiss with, in the open door with the wind blowing your, your dress. And, um, and that was no accident. That scene went into that movie because I have always been a fan of yours and a fan of John Ford's, who must have been like, like a second father to you. And I just think you do great work. And I think you've emboldened and empowered women. I think you were a ro role model for all women. And you brought strength to the role that women typically pe played in the 1930s and 40s. And I think in a sense, with, with your performances in all of those great films, you really 
led women on a kind of new road of suffrage. It was a kind of a, a second path where women felt emboldened when they went to the movies to say, wow, those women are great role models. I want to live my life to become like Maureen O'Hara. And many, many women did. Many directors are influenced by you. And many directors and many men are in love with you. You have many admirers, and I am at the top of the list. Congratulations. Well, ladies and gentlemen, of course, it wasn't just The Quiet Man. There was a host of other wonderful film work down through the years. And let us remind ourselves now, in this brief montage, of part of the body of work on film through the years. I suppose the safest way for us to start our conversation would be for you to just say, to what do I owe the honor of your visit? Three hundred years of happy dreaming in those things of mine, and I want them. I want my dream. I have it, and I know it. What have I done? Why do you pursue me? Somewhere in your heart, there must be love. Until then, I am mistress in this house, and I will give the orders. I have a fearful temper. What an idiotic joke! Accept it, I think I'm easy. Don't touch me. Two women in the house and one of them are eight. You keep a civil tongue in your unprepossessing face. I'll be going on home now. I'll have the supper ready for you. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the Lifetime Achievement Award for 2004 goes to Maureen O'Hara.
Thank you very, very much. And I must say, I think you're all mad. <laughs> <clears throat> to have been born in Ireland is the greatest gift God can give you. Yes, it is. And to be proud of that is the greatest gift you can return to God and give to the country of our birth. I know, I know many of you think I boast of Ireland too much. I don't think so, and that's what's really important to me. I started in the picture business, or in the theatrical business, when I was six years of age, and I entered all the feshes in Ireland. I won the Ratmines fesh, I won the Myra fesh, I, I won every fesh in Ireland, and I was always very proud of it. I was a theatre snob, and I never intended to have anything to do with movies. <laughs> but Charles Lawton saw me working, and signed me to a seven-year contract and took me to America. I made my first film in London called Jamaica Inn, and he took me to America to make The Hunchback of Notre Dame with him. And then war broke out, and none of the, uh, us who went out, people like David Niven and everything else, went out to America. We were not permitted back under the law of war. And so I stayed in the United States of America and was very lucky to have met all the wonderful directors I did, including, including an old devil called John Ford. And <clears throat> and the first picture I made with that great, distinguished director was uh, uh, the film in Wales, How Green Was My Valley. And I was very thrilled and really blessed to have been given all of the support and everything that I did get. And I was very proud to have made one of the first, no, there was a, one other great film. Uh, I was going to say the first great film made in Ireland that did so much for Ireland. But there was one many years ago, and I don't know if any of you are as old as I am, and consequently old enough to remember the wonderful film that was made called The Arriner. Nobody remembers it? It was, a, it was a great Irish film when I was a little girl. I don't know if all of you know how old I am. I do, <laughs> unfortunately. I had a sister who said, uh, old age is a terrible thing, particularly when it strikes you when you're so young. <laughs> I am 84 years of age. And if any of you young gentlemen would like to come up here and have a little battle, I know who'd win. <laughs> Me. <laughs> but anyway, I guess enough is enough, and really all of you who are in the theatrical profession, the television profession, or the movie profession, keep really working. Never forget you represent to the whole world this small, great, fabulous country. I would like to thank the Irish Film and Television Society and the awards committee for even nominating me and then for voting. But maybe it was a lean day and you didn't have anybody else to vote for. But anyway, I'd also like to thank David Lewis, 
who designed the outfit I'm wearing, <laughs> and to, to amaze you about the generosity of Irish people, he gave it to me as a gift. <laughs> and his name was Richard Lewis, a very fine Irish designer. And then there's Anne Moriarty, who was the CEO or, or the chief executive officer of the Film and Television Society. And I'd also like to say hello to my daughter, who's with me tonight, Bronwyn, who was named for uh, the, the part played by Anna Lee in How Green Was My Valley. And there's one other, there's one other person here that um, it kind of breaks my heart to have to say anything nice about her. She's, uh, well, I have to break down and tell the truth. She's a wonderful, intelligent, fine person. She does all of the public relations for things like the dairy milk of, of Ireland, uh, Murphy Stout, all kinds of wonderful people with my golf tournament down in West Cork. and. I doubt if I would have survived in Ireland without her. And uh, let me see if there's anybody. But, oh, I forgot to tell you her name. <laughs> I'm teasing her. Believe me, her name is printed on my brain and my heart and my soul. Sally Ryan. Yeah. I'm going to get signs now to shut up and get off. But uh, th there was Pierce Brosnan, who's here tonight. <laughs> and I'd interest you to know that his people came from County Meath. So did my father. And my father played football for County Meath, got caught at a soccer game. And that was the end of his playing Irish football. <laughs> so. He then said, well, to hell with it. I'll never go to an Irish football game again. And so he got interested in soccer and uh, became one of the directors and, and stockholders of Shamrock Rovers. <laughs> and I grew up on Shamrock Rovers football. And the greatest and happiest days of my life used to be when Shamrock Rovers won. And we had one Italian player that came from down in the city, and his mother always wore a beautiful black, like West of Ireland shawl. And she owned a sweet shop and uh, uh, chocolates. And she'd fill her pocket full of it. And I can't remember the name of her son, damn it. But uh, when he scored a goal, or he did something wonderful, all of the kids, all of us who were young, we all sat around close to her because we'd all get a bar of chocolates. <laughs> if he didn't do so well, we got nothing. <laughs> but anyway, I could stand up here and I could tell you stories about Dublin and the good old days and football and horse racing and uh, um, dog racing. Uh, because it was part of my life and part of growing up because our family was very sport sports family. And Daddy and Mommy were two of the most beautiful people you could imagine. And very jealous of each other, which we six kids, we reveled in it. We thought it was wonderful. When Daddy would go down the street on Milltown Road, that's where we lived, and uh, all the old bachelors would come out just to walk beside our mother, who was reputed to be the most beautiful woman in Ireland in those days. And Daddy would say, look at that silly woman. Look, just look at her. Look at that silly woman. And then he'd walk down the street, and all the old widow women would come out and walk beside him. And Mommy would look out the door, and she'd say, look at that silly man. And we as kids, we reveled in it because they were so jealous of each other and they loved each other so much 
and we swore that we would try to follow their love of life and their love of each other. And please God, we did. I hope so. And thank you for the award tonight. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. It's, uh, it, it, it's just a wonderful gift from Ireland to an Irish woman, and she appreciates it. Thank you.